Buenos dias. My name is Consuelo Ortiz. I'm originally from Colombia, so I speak Spanglish. And I'm here to provide a glimpse uh, under the hood of Wi-Fi Alliance. So I'm going to, I, I divided the presentation into segments. One is a little overview of Wi-Fi and the market. And then we get a little bit more into uh, Wi-Fi Alliance and, and what we do. So uh, you, you know that connectivity and the technologies that make it possible have become critical for our daily life. We can't imagine a day without Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi has become a foundational technology for our connected societies. So Wi-Fi Alliance uh, is committed to the ongoing evolution of Wi-Fi to maximize the value it delivers and that it continues to connect uh, everyone and every, everything everywhere. Uh, so when we started, uh, Wi-Fi Alliance was started originally to promote adoption of what we called wireless Ethernet. So the, this was at a time where we had competing technologies like Home PNA, uh, FireWire, or looking to remove the wire that connected your PC to Ethernet. Uh, so we started what was called Weka uh, with six numbers a million years ago, or, or almost 25 years ago. And uh, we were using 11B, with, uh, it was a beeping 11 uh, megabit uh, per second. But today um, uh, we have over 900 members. Uh, we're working on generation of Wi-Fi 6, moving into Wi-Fi 7, maximum data rates of 9 BPS, uh, a one gigabit file that used to take 13 seconds to transfer. We can now transfer in uh, six seconds, uh, 13 minutes and now in six seconds. I, I think I said it wrong. But anyway, so um, what is Wi-Fi Alliance? So Wi-Fi Alliance, uh, represent a diverse set of white member companies uh, that work, uh, I might say, in a co-operative way uh, or environment to bring you Wi-Fi. So many of our members are device vendors, as you can see on the pie chart, but we also have representation from uh, all other sides of the ecosystem, uh, meaning semiconductors, service providers, uh, software companies, automotive, healthcare, and other segments. So our members are distributed throughout the planet. Uh, the majority of them are in Asia, followed by the Americas, and then Europe uh, follows that. So Wi-Fi became and continues to be the preferred standard for wireless connectivity. And as I said before, we can't imagine a day without Wi-Fi. Uh, it has maintained its upward momentum, and we've seen 3, 8 billion of Wi-Fi devices forecasted to ship in 23 this year, uh, contributing to a 42 billion uh, cumulative uh, Wi-Fi shipments uh, over the technology lifetime. So this year, uh, and I think this comes from IDC, we'll also see 19.5 billion of installed Wi-Fi devices uh, to support access points and other things laptops, smartphones, and increasingly complex use cases. Uh, as more countries release uh, online spectrum for six gigahertz, we will start seeing more adoption of 320 gigahertz channels and Wi-Fi 6E. And IDC predicts that we will have 473 million of um, 6E enabled devices this year. So that's, that's, that's a huge number. Um, Did I move? Okay, so Wi-Fi uh, delivers most of the uh, internet traffic. Uh, it, it is a complementary technology for enterprise carrier networks, as well as an essential part for the home. And, and we saw that during COVID, correct? Where most of us were working from home and uh, we, we really needed to be able to have a quality of connection that supported video conferences and collaborative, collaborative work uh, being remote. Uh, so Wi-Fi is expected to continue to handle more than half of all the internet traffic for the foreseeable future, and it offloads most of the mobile data traffic. Uh, so to keep up with the trends and the increase in use, uh, like video streaming and innovations like AR, VR, XR applications that go beyond entertainment, gaming, healthcare, 
Uh, that requires a wide industry commitment to continue to advance Wi-Fi connectivity, and that is what we do. So the next generation, as the next generation of roads becomes uh, available, uh, along with harmonization of the spectrum, uh, Wi-Fi Alliance will continue to bring the benefits uh, and impact uh, socioeconomic values in the different regions. Well, I don't know if you've seen this slide before, but uh, Wi-Fi comes in, a, in different flavors, like the Baskin Robin thing. So, of course, we have, um, we support 11B and A and G, uh, but Wi-Fi 4, which is N, is probably the oldest technology that we still see deployed in the market. Uh, I've seen some cases of B, but for the majority, 11N is the oldest. Uh, we have uh, Wi-Fi 5, Wi-Fi 6E, uh, 6 e 6 and 6E. And uh, look, moving forward, uh, we, we will see an increase in 6 gigahertz adoption, and Wi-Fi 6E was the first one. Wi-Fi 7 will also have it. Uh, on top, we, we see white gig uh, at 60 gigahertz. But I, I want to point out the, the technology at the bottom. Uh, that is Wi-Fi Halo. Wi-Fi Halo uh, was designed for products that incorporate aspects of IEEE 802.11ah technology. And it enables low power, low range, and low cost connectivity necessary for applications, including sensor networks and wearables. And uh, IDC reports adoption of Wi-Fi Halo in things like security cameras, where you want to have maybe a, a longer range and uh, you still have the, the level of connectivity needed to support uh, video. Anyway, so that's for that slide. So, where we are on Wi-Fi 6 and, and Wi-Fi 6C and Wi-Fi 7 adoption. So all the latest generations of Wi-Fi, including Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 7, offer new capabilities that support advanced use cases that I mentioned before, uh, such as extended reality, telepresence, high definition video streaming, and much more, uh, because they tend to improve uh, the determinism and uh, provide lower latency in Wi-Fi. So the increasing number of Wi-Fi 6E uh, shipments and upcoming of Wi-Fi 7 will continue to reinforce uh, Wi-Fi steady growth in 2023 and 2024. Uh, Wi-Fi Alliance certification ensures that users will have a secure, reliable, and interoperable experience using the, the new technology with the new devices. So each generation of Wi-Fi goes through a certification and, and testing process to ensure interoperability. Uh, and that's when you see the Wi-Fi certified uh, seal or, or logo. Oh, my, my, my mouse uh, decided to go to sleep. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, about Wi-Fi Alliance and, and, and what we actually do. So basically, the areas that support our mission and, and are first to drive the next generation of technology, and did, this includes continually evolving, for example, security with WPA, upcoming generations of files such as Wi-Fi 7, uh, which is based in 802.11.de, uh, additional functionality uh, to improve uh, performance, and you will see that in QoS management, uh, Wi-Fi optimized connectivity, Wi-Fi agile multiband. Uh, those are uh, additional features out of 802.11 that improved uh, roaming or connectivity. We have seen a trend where uh, performance and device behavior and enhancing the quality of the service of the quality of experience is more important. So there are cases where we may need to expand testing to include more realistic deployment scenarios in addition to the certification. 
So we work uh, to ensure consistent interoperability across devices. Uh, we integrate complementary technologies that, uh, for example, uh, Wi-Fi coexists uh, with cellular, and we do have a group that deals with that, it's CWG. Uh, it coexists with Bluetooth. Uh, we're starting to see matter into the picture. So we, we work on that uh, complementary technologies and to continue to provide seamless, seamless connectivity. And then finally, we ensure that uh, we have global spectrum availability and work towards uh, harmonization of that spectrum. So if you participate as a member, and this is a slide that I borrow from our, our membership, is what do we do or what can members do? So first, and the most important one, uh, drive the Wi-Fi evolution. So that is collaboration to define the Wi-Fi feature roadmap. We test uh, and certify products. Uh, for that, we use authorized certification labs, but there is a new mechanism that we have for testing where in a special cases, uh, members can test in their own premises without using a lab. We help uh, educate uh, the industry as a whole about Wi-Fi features and the value of Wi-Fi, as well to advocate for the spectrum resources globally. And that's something that you probably have seen a lot uh, lately. We typically don't do a lot of market to consumer. And the, the way we reach consumers is probably when we make announcements or fives or we, or we came up with this uh, generational Wi-Fi four, five, six, seven. Uh, we have a voice to promote and to extend the voice uh, beyond uh, ours and that of our members and to reach the industry. And there are different programs that uh, members could engage to make that happen. Uh, we participate in webinars like we're doing today. And I think the, the most important uh, part of being a member for Wi-Fi Alliance is the ability to network uh, and work with the Wi-Fi experts that are defining the Wi-Fi roadmap. Uh, when we have, we query our members on what is the value of our member meetings, what they value the most, um, most of the time is the ability that they have to share ideas, uh, not necessarily only during meetings, but in hallway discussions, uh, during the happy hour, where they may reach uh, alignments and agreements or uh, just network with peers that uh, know more about Wi-Fi and provides the ability for some of them to learn. So networking with uh, global Wi-Fi experts is uh, one of the big foundations and value that we bring. Uh, but Wi-Fi Alliance uh, draws from different sources uh, to define our technologies. Of course, we have a Wi-Fi Alliance IP in our task plans, but for the most part, we draw from IEEE standards and, uh, and other bodies like ITF. We work very close with WBA, uh, with the Broadband Forum. So uh, we listen to the in industry and then create uh, liaison agreements with those uh, organizations that we need to discuss or cooperate the most with. But task groups is really the forum uh, where Wi-Fi Alliance members accomplish all the work. So we they collaborate to develop certification programs. Uh, we have uh, task groups that do uh, marketing uh, and uh, define the feature requirements. We have technical task groups and we have market segment task groups. So basically the marketing task groups define the features. This is where you come to agree in the features that are going to be supported in Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 7 or QoS management. The technical task group uh, is, is a group of uh, companies that author the specification and the test plan. All of our specifications are public now. 
and they are available to the industry as a whole. What we still keep only for members is the task plans. So the technical task group is responsible for driving the testing events, the validation of the specification, the creation of the test plan, and identify potential test bed device candidates. And, and these are the companies that for part of the test bed that will be used to certify the products for that particular uh, feature set. Then we also have market segment groups. And, and this is to provide domain specific expertise on, of, on behalf of the Wi-Fi Alliance on particular industry segments. And we can we see that from the operator or service provider group, uh, healthcare, automotive, um, and, and other groups. But this is basically groups that um, are represent an industry segment, and we would like to see more software companies uh, that come and influence the roadmap by highlighting the needs of the segment and the gaps they find in that one. It, so, so what are the task groups that we have um, currently available? So this slide uh, has the list of the task groups that are currently developing or doing certification work. There are some task groups that uh, are no longer active, like uh, Wi-Fi Agile Multiband. We continue to maintain and support and make enhancements, but uh, the, the goal for that task group is over, so we close it down. Uh, and the, the actual task groups that are working on certification are 60 gigahertz, mirror cache, Passpoint, secure onboarding, security, all about WPA, Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 7, uh, Wi-Fi aware, also known as uh, NAN, and this is where uh, Wi-Fi devices can form their own peer-to-peer -peer network and one of the peers decides to become sort of the AP and they harmonize. It's used a lot in drone coordination and other things. Uh, we have Wi-Fi data elements, and Wi-Fi data elements is defining a set of KPIs uh, that are important to monitor and help maintain the health of uh, a Wi-Fi network. Uh, so that uh, standard, uh, they work very close with Wi-Fi EC Mesh and the World uh, Broadband Forum. Uh, we have Wi-Fi EC Connect, which is another form of onboarding. Uh, supports headless, uh, you, they can use QR codes to onboard your uh, device to a, to a network. Uh, Wi-Fi Easy Mesh, which is our, our multi-AP scenario. Wi-Fi Halo that I already mentioned is 900 megahertz, uh, low range uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, home design, uh, it's something that, that came up a couple of years ago and it was the idea of validating particular residential home plans. And there were several builders that, uh, there are several builders that are involved uh, in securing uh, certification of not just the type of equipment, but also of the location of the equipment in the home. Uh, we have Wi-Fi location. So Wi-Fi location, first of all, doesn't rely on RSSI. It used FTM. Frames, uh, to do ranging and ascertain location of uh, devices relative to an AP or, a, or another peer. The program has, gotten, uh, has got several uh, incremental uh, uh, adjustments or, or revisions, and uh, they all aim to increase uh, the accuracy uh, and the range. And Wi-Fi location, uh, will become in general more important now that we're starting to see uh, a standard operation six gigahertz because uh, based on, for the US FCC rules, uh, the APs will have to report uh, their location uh, in order to determine, um, make sure that they do not uh, uh, overlap uh, incumbents in that frequency. 
Um, and then a Wi-Fi optimized connectivity. Uh, it's an interesting group. It's all about remaining best connected. It has taken charge of maintaining Wi-Fi Agile Multiband, which is a KVR. It created optimized connectivity, which is 802.11i, and that is uh, ensuring fa faster transitions and uh, removing some of the traffic overhead. That group is also working on, on the same topic, better Wi-Fi, best connected, on QoS management. And QoS management leverage uh, the foundation, which is WMM. I don't know that if you remember that, it's, it's been a long uh, standing certification. It's mandatory for every single VI. So it, it's, it's, it's not advertised that much because it's, it's already mandatory. Um, and it really works to uh, prioritize traffic uh, on the network to ensure that uh, traffic is assigned the, 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 pro, the, propi, the proper QoS um, value to ensure that it's uh, relied to the next step. So uh, it ensures that um, applications like video conferencing and now XR applications remain with uh, low latency. Uh, but it also uh, enables, uh, it provides tools for both client devices and also um, administrators in order to assign uh, different um, mappings. So it has features like DSCP mapping, uh, SCS and mirror SCS that would enable that uh, passing of uh, priorities uh, across the network. Uh, that group is currently working to extend that uh, to cover uh, 5G and be able to pass the traffic classification across multiple networks. Uh, on the market segment task groups, we currently have automotive, and that group is increasingly becoming uh, more and more active. Uh, we have healthcare. Uh, that provide insights on needs specific to healthcare devices or deployments or onboarding. We have a group that uh, deals with IoT uh, and it kind of broken into IoT for residential and IoT for industrial applications. Then we have the operator or service provider group. And this group deals with managed Wi-Fi. Uh, they are very active. They conduct regular surveys uh, and work to influence requirements that go into all of the specifications that we create. So in a way, that, that group uh, helps guide uh, the final features in FIS, uh, in things like QoS management or uh, data elements or any of our specifications. So they provide, they present a community and provide guidance on what that community needs to support their services in this case. And then we have uh, the latest group that was created is XR. So it's, it's, a, it's a market segment group that is working to educate the industry on the value of XR uh, working to the, clearly define the requirements uh, for AR, VR, and whatever is coming next. And, and there's a wide representation of companies that are uh, cooperating uh, to figure out what else would be needed for the more advanced XR uh, solutions that will be coming out. And then we have it's kind of a special program task force. And on that, we have AFC, Automated Frequency Control. And that is important for six gigahertz standard power. Uh, they, they created a specification. Um, we also have customer experience. And, and this group is an unusual group uh, because Wi-Fi Alliance uh, in the past uh, didn't do much about performance testing and, and there's some more and more and more we see more demand from the market and ask for performance. So the customer experience task group developed um, a test plan 
uh, and uh, it had a lot of inputs from operators and basically is uh, operators have to accept all sort of client devices in their networks. And when I say operators, I mean it in a generic term, uh, an operator of a managed Wi-Fi network could be a university or a, a enterprise and airport. They need to deal with all sort of devices and they need to test um, that they are able to get into the network and, and figure out why not. So that group created a series of use cases and is developed a test plan that is publicly available uh, to help uh, validate or characterize devices. Uh, we don't provide, it has to be lower than this or greater than that. We leave that for the company doing the test uh, to validate uh, what they are need, needed for their particular use cases. But it's something that I believe that it would be of interest for the community and we will continue to expand on that uh, test plan. The plan is called device metrics. We also have a long range planning group. And this is a group uh, that is looking at the future of Wi-Fi and looking at what's coming and, and what are the new task groups that we would need to form. And finally, uh, we have a group that is regulatory and that is more dealing with uh, governmental entities to ensure homogeneity and standardization of the spectrum. So we do a lot of work. Uh, we're always looking forward uh, to what's coming next. And this is a list, uh, not comprehensive. Uh, I'm sure there, there are more that I did not include of uh, standards that could be under consideration. So we have uh, 11BB for light communications, 11BC uh, for enhanced broadcast, uh, randomized and changing MAC uh, addresses. Uh, that's something that we're paying a lot of attention. Our security task group is looking into it. I would say that Passpoint is also looking into it and, and other uh, task groups in, in Wi-Fi Alliance. Uh, we have extremely high throughput uh, or Wi-Fi 7. We do have a task group uh, working on it and actually it's two task groups. We have the marketing task group that defines the requirement and the technical task group that is working on the test plan. Uh, we have um, 11 ME uh, with uh, all of the task groups are looking into it. Uh, it's accumulated changes and maintenance. Uh, we have wife, uh, wireless land sensing, and that is of particular interest to the operator market segment task group. And I would say that automotive is also very interested on it. And I should have added automotive on that. Uh, we don't have a task group yet, uh, but if I look into the prediction, I think one will be formed uh, very, very soon. Uh, we also work with organizations and I mentioned a few of them before. So with some of them we have established and have liaison agreements and we do more open exchanges. Uh, an example of that is WBA. That is kind of a sister organization. Uh, we have quarterly joint meetings in which members of both organizations participate. Uh, we alternate topics. Uh, a lot of the discussions have been around past point and open roaming. Uh, more recently, uh, we have had conversations on IoT, other uh, mechanisms for onboarding, of course, the files. We collaborate on uh, trials. Uh, we have had collocated meetings. Uh, so there's a lot of cross pollination with them. Uh, but we also work with other organizations like CSA now for uh, Matter and IoT, the Broadband Forum that I mentioned before uh, for data elements in particular. And actually, of course, and, and, and ITF and, and others that I didn't mention.
So, but having said all of that, um, certification uh, started as the foundation for Wi-Fi Alliance and is still our foundation. So the collaborative work carried out globally by member companies uh, to establish that Wi-Fi device feature set and standards to provide a common interoperability base is the foundation for certification. So the test plans are, are based on what an industry agreed requirements that would ensure that devices provide uh, reliable, consistent, secure, interoperable uh, experience. And of course, it supports ISO uh, certification process and development and testing. Uh, testing is conducted at independent authorized uh, certification labs around the world. And if you go to the White Pie Alliance page, uh, you, you may be able to find uh, the list of labs. So how, what, how do members um, certify? So we have like three different buckets. One is FlexTrack. And FlexTrack is always conducted at an ATL lab, authorized testing lab. It's for those companies that do a, lot, a huge level of certification, uh, of the customization on their platforms. And that, uh, that they are more heavily involved. They really modify the firmware that is provided by the uh, chipset vendor. Uh, and uh, they certify uh, in using the authorized certification labs. Uh, we created uh, an uh, easier way of cert achieving certification that is called uh, Quick Track for companies that want to test on site, they don't want to use an ATL. They could use an ATL if they wanted. And these are companies that relied on what we call uh, qualified solutions. And they do not provide uh, a lot of changes. Uh, to the, they don't do a lot of changes to the Wi-Fi functionality. Uh, so that is a much faster way of certifying uh, for that set of uh, customers or members. And last, uh, we have derivative certifications, which are products that have already been certified, but you change the box to change something that is not necessarily impacting Wi-Fi performance, and therefore they can be certified without any additional testing to Wi-Fi functionality. Um, so we, I mentioned before, we promote uh, universal standards and work to advance topics that are important to Wi-Fi as a whole. We do that globally. Uh, so we advocate and we try to shape uh, regulatory policy in terms of a spectrum um, in order to get to that harmonized level. So right now there are a lot of efforts in the promotion and advocacy for Wi-Fi 6 uh, uh, at a global level. So now in terms of, of marketing, uh, so it's one of the things that we do is to promote. So uh, we're actively uh, uh, promoting, we actively promote solutions for our members. Uh, we provide the ability to, um, for them to leverage uh, insight into the campaigns and opportunities that we have, uh, we're driving inside Wi-Fi Alliance. Uh, we have created, uh, kind of a separate group that is an active forum of, of, of member companies uh, that are on the marketing side as opposed to the technical side in order to uh, participate and be aware of announcements that we're making or promotions that we're making. And, and that is called our marketing network. Uh, and if you are interested in, in marketing, I would suggest that your market representatives uh, get in touch and participate on that on that uh, on that group. And basically, the idea is to amplify the voice of uh, Wi-Fi Alliance and also that of our members in order to reach out uh, a wider market. So we have different channels that we use to strengthen that marketing story. Uh, of course, we have our press releases, media coverage. 
Uh, we have the beacon, and I added links uh, on, on the presentation to all of that, that has blogs on a variety of topics. Um, we welcome blogs from the industry. So it's, it's, it could, it's not necessarily restricted. Uh, we have the signal uh, that is a podcast uh, that works to provide broad exposure, exposure to the industry. We definitely, uh, that definitely is open to members and non-members. Uh, we have the Wi-Fi Line Insider, which is a regular newsletter. Uh, we have case studies and that we publish depending on the uh, task group and technology that we're working on or advocating for. And we have the normal uh, social media channels. And then last, uh, but perhaps the most important aspect uh, of being part of Wi-Fi Alliance is the ability to co co collaborate, learn, and work with uh, industry peers that are the experts in Wi-Fi. And uh, this picture, by the way, uh, was taken in Washington, DC, when we celebrated our 20th uh, anniversary. And that was um, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we are working, we're preparing for our 25th anniversary, and uh, the story will continue. So we'll may have a new updated picture, uh, not this year, but the following year. Uh, anyway, so that is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Oh, I forgot to put my um, email address. So I will update the slides and provide my email address. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Again, I'm Consuelo Ortiz, and very happy to be here with you. Thank you, Heather. Of course. Kayla, and I think we do have some questions in the Q&A panel for you. So Chris, if you want to run that. Yeah, absolutely. So there's uh, quite a few in here, so we'll get to a couple of them. But uh, I know in the beginning, we, we talked about this before the before the webinar, but there's definitely a lot of questions around Wi-Fi 7 and what the course is on that. Uh, so if you can kind of give us uh, where the Wi-Fi line sits right now with Wi-Fi 7 and, and what your thoughts are on it. Uh, for testing and and what that's uh, that may be here in the future. Okay, so so if the question is 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 Wi-Fi seven here? So we definitely have seen uh, Wi-Fi seven devices in the market. That happens with every release of, of Wi-Fi. It happened with Wi-Fi six. It will happen with Wi-Fi eight. Uh, but if you ask me, is Wi-Fi seven certified there? No, it's not quite there yet. Uh, the certification is no longer, uh, it's, not, it's not yet available, it's under development. Uh, the actual test plan is not finalized yet. Uh, we are looking towards having certification available uh, Q1 next year. Uh, we announced earlier this year that we were working uh, towards the development of certification, so that, that work continues. But that doesn't prevent the industry from starting early development uh, is what we see in the market. So we will continue to see Wi-Fi 7 devices coming, uh, coming out and uh, the certification will be available, meaning the final test or final, the agreement on the final set of features will come out early next year. Uh, I, I, did that answer your question? It did. Yes. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Sorry, I, I muted myself. But uh, uh, so there's definitely a lot of questions in here about the different um, groups that are going on within uh, the Wi-Fi Alliance, such as Halo, uh, Wi-Fi Location, uh, and Easy Mesh. So I'm just going to ask a couple of them, and, and maybe we can actually do a webinar on some of these. But uh, one of them was actually about Halo. Uh, it, it seems to be getting a lot of traction now. Um, I'm hearing a lot more about it. And Force is asking, uh, he he hasn't heard it specifically, but wanted to know some of the applications. And I know, you know, from what I've seen, uh, like a lot of agricultural, a lot of outdoor, a lot of low power IoT sensors uh, really uh, gain some value from that, as well as distance. You know, and I think there's a lot of like one kilometer kind of range with Halo. Do you have anything else to add to Halo? Well, I, I alluded to, and, uh, and this is something that came from IDC, uh, they're seeing a lot of traction with uh, security cameras. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So particularly, just let's say you have a, a parking lot, uh, and and you your camera is far away, and so Halo will be ideal for that. 
Perfect. Okay. Um, and I also dropped the link in the chat for the uh, all of the different uh, Discover the Wi-Fi Alliance groups that are out there. So if you have any questions on that, uh, see that link to, to kind of get some additional value there, because I think there's a lot of information that's that's in there. Um, can you either go into a little bit of more detail either on Wi-Fi location uh, or uh, what was the other one that was in here? Uh, Wi-Fi Easy Mesh, I think, were the two that were brought up. Okay. Can, uh, can you... Yes. Um, Wi-Fi location, uh, as I mentioned before, doesn't rely on RSSI. It uses FTM frames. Okay. Uh, and, and we could do a, a, a whole uh, panel on that. <laughs> um, so it's it's been it's, it's been used of, of course to uh, do self-located IPs as Aruba released last year, for example. So th there's a lot of movement in the industry to how to uh, identify the location of IPs uh, without necessarily uh, using uh, GPS, uh, particularly to report um, their location if they were using a six hertz standard uh, power. Okay. But it's also used uh, in applications like uh, uh, opening a vehicle, uh, trying to figure out uh, where you are, wayfinding, uh, the, the traditional uses, correct, of, of, of location. Okay. Uh, the, the group is very active, and uh, there's a lot of um, industry support. Uh, I believe that Google has several applications available in their store that rely on Wi-Fi location. Uh, Wi-Fi Alliance had a demo during our a member meeting in Lisbon uh, where we had uh, Samsung phones. And, and this was kind of an impromptu demo. So we had Samsung phones, uh, uh, Pixel phones, and others. Uh, I think we were featuring uh, Aruba um, APs. Uh, using Google's uh, applications. We also use Aruba's Meridian applications for the particular hotel that we were at in order to do way from ending. So um, I would be more than happy to orchestrate uh, a more detailed um, insight on a Wi-Fi location. And an interesting note, uh, Dorothy, uh, who heads actually 802.11, is the chair for Wi-Fi location. 